Hello everyone. My name is Kate Hoffmaster and I'm a Conservation Officer at Sunshine Coast Council. I'm here today to talk about Council's Turtle Care Program and how our long-term nesting data set has led to policy co-creation for marine turtles. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the contributions of my colleague Jacqueline Nolan in the programs and work that I'm presenting today. I would also like to respectfully acknowledge the Cubby Cubby people, the traditional owners and custodians of the land where I work and live. I pay my respect to the elders, past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, culture and understanding of our beautiful land. Marine turtles have a long history on the Sunshine Coast for both First Nations people and European settlers. Turtle Care was founded in the early 2000s by just a handful of local residents that regularly walked the beach looking for tracks and evidence of nesting. The program became more formalised in 2005 when Sunshine Coast Council provided a project coordinator and we collaborated with the Queensland Government's Turtle Conservation Project led by Dr Col Limpus. Now, 16 years later, we have almost 200 community citizen scientists contributing over 8,000 hours each summer to marine turtle conservation. Critical to the success of the Turtle Care Program are the direct links between citizen scientists and the research community. One such example of this is Dr Julie O'Connor's work looking at fox predation of nests on Turtle Care beaches. Volunteers place fox exclusion devices, or construction mesh, just under the sand surface at each and every nest to protect from fox predation. Dr O'Connor's work studied this over a 10 year period and found that the consistent meshing by citizen scientists reinforced a no food here message to local foxes. This resulted in a reduction in nest breaches from 27% to less than 3%. Another example of meaningful collaboration with the research community is our telemetry research. In collaboration with Dr. Cole Limpus, Queensland Turtle Conservation Project, we attach satellite telemetry devices to three marine turtles. Our turtle care citizen scientists were instrumental in the identification of suitable nesting turtles for the studies, in the logistics of moving turtles in and out of the nesting beaches, preparation and attachment of the trackers, and subsequently release. Outside of satisfying our collective curiosity of where our turtle foraging grounds are, this work has formed part of a meta-analysis of loggerhead turtle migrations in Queensland, undertaken by Michelle Perez from James Cook University, and is being submitted for scientific publication. We have found that the direct collaboration between researchers and citizen scientists enriches the volunteer experience and when published in scientific literature, brings additional meaning and recognition to the citizen scientists in our program. By the end of 2016, our program was at capacity with a waiting list of over 100 local residents each year. Our community were very engaged and we were challenged to manage the high level of interest in the program. We embarked on a program review to look at and assess the technical and social aspects of the program with the view to create a strategic plan in the future that would not only support the recovery of endangered species, but also look at the citizen science program going forward. As part of the review, we looked at the large data set that was collected by the three volunteer groups within the study area, being Turtle Care, Kulama North Shore Coast Care and the Bribey Island Turtle Trackers. We found that the population was stable and that it demonstrated the normal population demographic features that we would have expected for the East Coast loggerheads and South Southern Great Barrier Reef green turtles. Our report was peer reviewed by academics at the University of Queensland and Charles Darwin University and was found to be an excellent example of effective citizen science based wildlife monitoring. In 2017, we engaged Dr. Kelly Pendoli to conduct a benchmark artificial light at night survey at 13 nesting beaches on the Sunshine Coast. Pendoli Environmental used a high resolution camera placed on nesting beaches to take images of the night sky and process these images using software to quantify the level of light. The first image that you can see on the screen is from Yurumba, the darkest study site within the report. This location is, is classified 
quantitatively as a typical rural dark sky. Now compare this to the image of Coolan Beach with the bright lights of the surf club. And quantitatively, this location is a poor urban dark sky. These two study sites are just a few kilometres apart, separated by two headlands. There were four key elements that impacted artificial light at nesting beaches. And these are vegetation screening, cliff elevation, light design and management, and building orientation. This study has informed the locations that our volunteers undertake routine nest relocations, such as this site here at Malulabar, where eggs are carefully relocated to adjacent darker nesting beaches. This benchmark study has now been repeated at other local government areas here in Queensland and is also used as a development standard to understand the impacts of large accessible developments along the southeast Queensland coastline. We engaged Dr Vicky Schaefer from the University of Sunshine Coast to undertake a citizen science evaluation of the Turtle Care Program. 234 respondents from four stakeholder groups, including citizen scientists, community leaders, residents and local business owners participated in Dr Schaefer's review. The review found that the volunteer expectations were being met and the program was achieving its objectives. The majority of residents engaged in the review knew what action they needed to take to support the turtle conservation locally. The review identified both strengths and opportunities of the program. Strengths included high quality training and council support, the data collected by citizen scientists informing policy, planning and scientific research, and a sense of community and belonging. The weaknesses identified in the review were recognition and communication, community engagement, and habitat protection. And these have informed the next phase of our conservation planning, which is our long-term marine turtle conservation plan. With the completion of the review and the supporting technical reports, we moved forward to the creation of a marine turtle conservation plan. The 10-year plan will address emerging challenges and aim to maintain a successful turtle care program and support stable marine turtle populations on the Sunshine Coast under the pressure of population growth and climate change. So how did we do it? Firstly, we engaged with our regional experts to form a technical advisory panel with representatives from the research and citizen science communities. The role of the panel was to oversee the creation of the plan and ensure that it was representative of not only council's interests, but also the community's interests. Next, with the guidance of the panel, we engaged an expert conservation planner, Terry Harper, to facilitate the community engagement and create the plan. Our stakeholders were identified from the community groups, not only within our local government area, but also from the adjacent areas. Two half day workshops were held initially to guide the plan and identify the priorities from all of the stakeholders. Over 50 people attended the two workshops and these people represented citizen scientists, elected divisional councillors, technical experts such as environmental policy and planners, town planners, development assessment and economic development experts, lighting engineers and field staff. We engaged directly with the Cubby Cubby First Nations Native Title Claim Group to receive feedback about the plan and ensure we had their support to determine the cultural capability of our total care program. Once the draft had been created, we then took the plan back to the technical experts and tested the transformational actions by running half day policy workshops. These were designed specifically to ensure that the policy workshop participants had a sense of ownership and commitment to these actions, as they would be handed over to them for delivery once the plan was endorsed. In addition to this, the policy workshops allowed technical experts to reword some of the actions to ensure that they were relevant to their specific discipline. And finally, presentations of the final draft to all stakeholders are underway. Through the workshops and subsequent engagement, three themes were clearly identified by the stakeholders. Turtle sensitive coastal development, regional marine turtle recovery actions, and community-based turtle care program delivery. We're currently in the final stages of editing the conservation plan the next step in the process is to take our plan to council and then out to public comment for the final review by the community. Our vision, which was co-created through the engagement process, 
is to have marine turtles surviving and thriving on the Sunshine Coast, coexisting in harmony with people. At the end of the day, at the forefront of all of our work are the citizen scientists who engage with the research community in the protection and conservation of endangered species in what is essentially their own backyards. They are the custodians in our community protecting loggerhead turtles to ensure that the next generation can enjoy their summertime presence on our local beaches. And for that, we thank them enormously. I'll sign off today with a video that we created to highlight the contributions and expertise of the citizen scientists in turtle conservation on the Sunshine Coast. I'm Wayne Foster, a volunteer for the Sunshine Coast Turtle Care Program. So each day during the turtle season we uh, hop in the boat and then we'll come over to Bribey Island, uh, the northern tip. There's five kilometre stretch between the Bribey Fort and Bullcock Beach and we'll walk that each day. It's uh, very rewarding. My name's Sherida Holford. I've been a citizen scientist working with Coolum and North Shore Coast Care since 2007. So this is our 14th season that we've been actively monitoring the nest. Lee, myself and another two girls were given training where we learned how to tag turtles, relocate nests, uh, and then at the end of the season we learned how to dig nests and collect data from the nests that we were digging. We would only ever relocate a nest if we felt that um, it was going to be eroded by um, big waves, king tides, or there was a light issue with the nest. And we don't relocate our nest lightly, we really think about it, but because um, we like to leave it in situ where the mum has put it, but sometimes that's not possible for the survival of the, the clutch. After the hatchlings have emerged, we dig the nest roughly three days afterwards. We count how many empty shells are in that chamber, we count how many uh, undeveloped eggs are in there and how many unhatched are in there and if any of them have been predated. So that one is unhatched, it's got the little eyes right at the end but that embryonic development has arrested fairly early on so that's classed as unhatched. Our biggest issue on the coast at the moment is development and ambient light that sits behind the beaches so we actively talk to people about this, we ask people to turn off lights on the escarpments where we know we've got nests every season. We need to be um, proactive with keeping our beaches dark so when the mamas come back in 30 years time they've got a beach to lay on that's not lit up like a Christmas tree. We went to Monrepo in 2019. We experienced a lot of different sort of phases of the turtle laying nests, emergences, relocation of nests. We got involved with some of the new innovations as far as trying to improve the success rate of the turtles. Uh, basically we're doing a nest dig and the overall aim is to look at the success of the nest in terms of the number of hatchlings that have got to the sea. Um, so we're collecting scientific data which will help um, form policy work in the future. When you join a volunteer group like this, there's 100% dedication by everyone who joins it. When the hatchling leaves our waters to go out into the deep blue, uh, they don't return to lay their eggs until they're 29 or 30 years old. Um, so this is why we need to invest so much time and energy. It's really important for us to get the younger generation involved. Yeah.